Good evening. Tonight, a new Special Five report, Prisons for Profit. For years, the state of Tennessee has been relying on CoreCivic to run a number of state prisons. But has mismanagement to the facilities cost lives? Whistleblowers who were once on the inside say it is like a living hell where cries for help are ignored. Here's News Channel 5's Chris Conti and photojournalist Mike Rose. When society has exhausted every last option, this is the place where we place those we no longer have a place for. I miss my little boy. It is those like Teresa Anderson who are left with nothing but pain. These are prom pictures. Locked up pictures. inside their hearts. Just been a blur in the nightmare ever since. Gone are the days when she could simply hug her son Ross. He had become increasingly frustrating. Um, he was probably harder on me because I was around him more and it had just gotten to the point that I told I told his dad, I said, I, I, I can't deal with him anymore emotionally or mentally. December 6, 2015, inside this house on the same street his parents live on, something inside Ross Anderson snapped. In a fit of psychotic rage, Ross killed both his girlfriend Rachel and her five-year-old son Colton. I've just never been able to find the words to describe the grief and the sorrow. And well, the, no, no parent wants to lose a child. And it's, it's indescribable to think that your child could cause that loss for another parent. Four years later. This is him and his sister. Teresa and her husband, Bill, are not looking for pity. They know what their son did escapes any kind of explanation. We will forever be the parents of a murderer. Forever. There's no erase in that fact. For the crimes he committed, Ross Anderson was convicted and eventually sent here to Trousdale Turner Correctional Center in Hartsville, Tennessee. Sentenced to life with the possibility of parole, which he was, is still a death sentence because it's 51 years. He had no hope. Always in the back of my mind, I never thought he would make it out. Trousdale is one of four prisons where the state has outsourced operations to the privately run company CoreCivic. Over the years, the company has been plagued with problems. In 2017, a state audit blasted CoreCivic, finding places like Trousdale were wildly understaffed. State policies and procedures weren't being followed. There's a lot of gangs over there, and he told us about that. The first thing when he got there, um, he told us about the shower security which meant people like Ross Anderson were falling through the cracks. I don't feel like there was any mental health care. Suffering from manic depression and schizophrenia, the Andersons say their son never got the help he needed. On December 6th of 2018, the 34-year-old took his own life. It happened there on their watch. And it was the third anniversary. To the uh, day. To the day of... Rachel and Colton's deaths also. And I doubt that anybody there even knew it. The one lingering question they are left with is why they claim their son was constantly denied the medications he needed, why his mental illness was never taken care of by prison officials. <sighs> That's the thing that bothers me the most. Um, <sighs> I can't stand my own thoughts some days I'm thinking about about him dying in a place like that all alone with no one that loved him or cared about him. Ross Anderson is not alive to talk about what happens behind the walls of Trousdale Turner Correctional Center. What happened? But Edwin Stakely is. I was looked upon as a number, as a paycheck. Edwin ended up at the same core civic facility as Ross on January 10th of 2014 on an aggravated robbery charge. He does not deny breaking the law. The atmosphere itself was a lot of tension. What the 39-year-old cannot comprehend, though, is what happened while he was paying the societal debt he owed. When you close your eyes and you think about Trousdale, what, what do you see? A lot of pain. Do you want to know? I have trouble sleeping trouble eating, uh, a lot of pain. Records indicate that multiple times Edwin told prison officials his cellmate had threatened to rape him, 
largely because Edwin was a practicing Jew. Those cries for help, he says, were ignored until the middle of the night when those threats became something more. You know how that will make a person feel? To wake up to that? And then when you try to do so, report it to do the right thing, you get laughed at? Released from jail in 2018. I was raped on two occasions. Edwin now has a job. Five grown men hold you down and rape you. And has started lobbying lawmakers for change. It is humiliating. He is no longer staying silent. There, there are probably people out there who will say, these are people in jail. But We're still human. We still breathe the same air y'all breathe. We still have a heart that beats. It's morally and ethically wrong to be making a profit off of people in prison. Hearing stories like Edwin's, this mother and father believe privately run prisons aren't working for Tennessee. Prisons for profit, and Tennessee condones that by allowing themselves to be in a contract with this company. And it cost our son his life. It cost us our child. Teresa um, Anderson can hold her son again. Uh, it's just in a plastic box. Just not in a way she ever imagined. That's my boy. And the Andersons can't help but wonder if their son paid the ultimate price because the state's prisons are for profit. There's a hole in our hearts that will never, never heal. We've asked CoreCivic on multiple occasions for an on-camera interview and we were denied. They have, though, answered a list of questions that we emailed them in regards to Edwin Stakely's rape. They say his allegations were investigated but found to be unsubstantiated. Ross Anderson's suicide ladies still remains under investigation almost six months later, and state lawmakers just signed a new contract with CoreCivic that will last for a few more years. It's so sad. Just, it's a tragedy all around. Thank you, Chris.